Hi, praise the Lord. This is George again. I'm so happy to be here. I hope that you're doing well. So today I want us to talk about a very interesting topic, churching the dechurched. Okay, very interesting, churching the dechurched. So the concept that I have or what I want to bring up is that there are three kinds of people uh, when it comes to church or church stuff. Number one, there is the people who, that we call the churched. These are people who go to church. Uh, these are people who are committed to church. They understand, they understand church language. They, uh, you know, they wake up every morning. Uh, they go to church very early. They are prayerful. They serve. They want God in their lives. And these are the kind of people who believe that if you don't go to church, uh, you're actually sinning. They feel like they're sinning because they, they don't go to church. And, and when I say church, um, I'm talking about uh, every Sunday. Uh, every Sunday morning, they in church, uh, they serve. And, and I'm also talking about Wednesday Bible studies. I'm talking about Tuesday prayers or whatever time or whatever uh, engagement or program or activity that the church has, they are there. These are the church. They have the language of the church. They have the tongue of the church. They speak like church. They are church. Okay. And then we have the second category of people that we call the unchurched. And these are people who, who rarely go to church. These are guys who are not really interested in church. These are the kind of people who would not be seen around church. The, their first thing in, on Sunday morning is not church. It's, you know, what movie do I watch? Where do I go today? Uh, so they're unchurched. They, they, they never really understand anything about church. They don't understand the church language. They don't understand uh, what, you know, sometimes when we prophesy, they, they don't really understand that. And this is a very different category of people. And I have seen uh, that there are many churches today that are focusing on the unchurched. Okay, I was part of a church that was focused on the unchurched. And it was a wonderful experience for me. Uh, a time of learning, a time of understanding the culture and the people that we are reaching. And I realized that many times, uh, if you're focused on the unchurched, there are, it has its own challenges, but God gives you the grace. And then there's a, the third category that is called the dechurched. Now, these are people who have walked away from church. They have, they have been in church. They have served in church. They have done everything in church. They know the language of the church. They know the tongue. They have the tongue of the church. They understand prophecy. They understand preaching. They understand the Bible. They, I mean, like they have been in church and they have served in church, but they decided to walk away from church and now they don't go to church. Okay? And they, there are many reasons why people walk away from church. And, and so they become the dechurched. Or um, as we say, uh, you know, they, they, now they are there and they're saying, okay, I don't need to go back to a church. I don't need to be part of a church. I, don't, I know the language. Now, there are reasons why they walked away. Some of them walked away of church because of being hurt, because they felt the church was not considerate for them. There are many reasons, but they are the dechurched. Okay? And so the question is, we have people in church. We have people who are unchurched, and we have people who are dechurched. We have the churches that are, that are pastoring the churched, we have churches that are pastoring the unchurched or reaching out to the unchurched, but mostly the church is condemning the dechurched and, and the church is labeling them as rebellious. And the church is saying uh, that they have opposed the anointed of God. They have touched the anointed of God. And you see, when you listen to a dechurched person and you listen to an unchurched person, their arguments or their concepts and perspectives about church are very different. The unchurched person has no idea. You know, they just look at church and they're like, oh, it's a nice place. I think I, I want to explore. The dechurched person says, no, don't go to church. Uh, you, you will end up getting hurt. Don't, don't trust church. Don't do this. And the churched person is in church and they say, oh, I can't live my life without church. Or oh, if I leave church, I'm going to die. So I have to be in church. I have to be everything around me. All my friends, all my business clients are in church. Okay. So these are three categories of people. And we need to think about 
the dechurched? How do we reach out to these people who have been in church, to these people who understand the language of the church, but they don't want to be part of it because of the things they have experienced, okay? The funny thing today is that the world has moved to what I would call the post-Christian era, okay, post-Christian era, historically. And, and when I say this, I'm talking about the, the pre-Christian era before Jesus Christ, and then the Christian era, which came and, and lasted for thousands of years, when the Roman Empire embraced Christianity from the time of Constantinople. And when he, you know, when he became a Christian, and he Christianized the entire Rome and the entire Roman Empire, and the world became Christian, the, the known world then. And, and now we have uh, you know, history of, of Christianity. But now we have come to a point in our world where we are in the post-Christian era. And the sad thing about this is that Africa, uh, which was not really involved in Christianity in a long time, once we got the fire burning, we got it burning. Specifically in Kenya, we had uh, our Christian era in the 90s and perhaps 80s, but the 90s was the biggest thing. And there was a lot of Christianization, a lot of Christianity, uh, you know, to go around in, in our country. But now we have come to a point in our nation that I believe we have entered the post-Christian era, where people are not afraid to challenge Christianity. People are not afraid to challenge uh, the pastors. Yet at the same time, we have pastors who are not afraid of God, pastors who are not afraid of, of serving uh, of, of doing things, sorry, of doing things against uh, the, the people in the name of God. We have recently the case of the Shaka Hola, uh, you know, which has been in the news with this guy called Mackenzie, who, you know, people died in, in, his, in his hands and other pastors who are being involved in all these things of, of sacrifices and human sacrifices. We have come to a time where now the church is also being accused of witchcraft. And all this stuff is just empowering and emboldening the dechurched. Okay, so how do we reach these people who have left church? How do you do it as a community? How do I do it as a person? The number one thing that we have to do is to, pray, to prayerfully change the church strategy. We've got to change our strategy on how we approach the dechurched people. We cannot focus on them the same way we focus on the unchurched or those who are, or, or the lost. We cannot do outreach the same way to the dechurched that we do it to the unchurched. We've got to change. We've got to do something different. And therefore, it is important that I suggest that you prayerfully change the church strategy. Whatever it is that you do um, to do outreach, begin when you're moving or when you're talking to a dechurched person, change strategy. This means you may have to change how the church runs. You may have to change how the programs are. You may have to change uh, if, if usually you get into church and you have praise and worship and, and you know the normal stuff, the normal program that we do. When you are reaching the dechurched who've been there, done that and they didn't like it or they were hurt or they were in pain, you may have to change that and, and just apply or implement a different kind of strategy. Okay, number two, focus your budget on the uh, focus your budget outwardly. If you want to reach the dechurched, begin to take church out of the, 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 the building. All right, take the church out of the building. And you see, the dechurched mindset would come because they still love God, they still want to serve God, but they don't want to serve God in a church, and therefore they have done, you know, they have made either started faith-based organizations or parachurch organizations, or they join these organizations. They want to serve God, but they don't want to serve God within the confines of a building. So take focus the budget outwardly. Start doing events out there for church, or church events, or you know, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Begin to do things out, not really within the church. This will help you in two things. By doing that, you will reach the unchurched and the dechurched together, but you will have the, the church doing those two outreaches. So take the church people in your church out of church, okay, so that they can reach the de -churched and the unchurched. And have these people in your church invite their unchurched friends and their de-churched friends to these events 
that are not in the church. Now, this is very critical because most churches want to remain. Uh, you know, when you have a, a uh, when you have a building and, and a hall that you're not paying for, you really don't want to go out and, and begin to spend money uh, on other things or paying halls that you could actually do in your church. But look at how many people would show up in your church and how many people would show up out there. Remember, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not just about us. It's about everyone else. And number three, increase your community presence. So if you want to reach the de church, go to where they are. They left church, so go to them. Don't, don't just keep telling them, come back to church, come back to church. No, go to where they are. You know, I've met people who, who have complained that I left that church and whenever I meet people, they just tell me, go back to church, come back to church, come back to church. Instead of telling them, come back to church, why don't you go to where they are? Go meet them, go to their communities and talk to them and, and sit with them. Just like Job, when he was sick, his friends came to him and they sat with him. Let these people know that you understand their pain because some of them came out of these churches in, in a lot of pain. They have church wounds that run deep. They have church pain. They have issues that you may not even be able to sort within the context of a church. So go to where they are and sit with them. Increase your presence in the community. Stop condemning people for leaving church Instead, go bind their wounds where they are. And you see, this is the whole difference that the church can make. But the church is busy, you know, getting fat and out of breath with miracles and power that they forget to reach the unreached. We are so lazy as church people that we are not willing to go out. We are so comfortable in our space that when we go out, we become so uncomfortable. Yet Jesus called us to go out, to the, especially to the, to the lost, to go out of our comfort and talk to people and win people. Don't just want to be a celebrity in your own church, in your own cocoon. Go out, break the walls, and move out. Okay? And the last thing, create a welcoming space. So if you go out, and people begin to see, oh, so these guys are coming for me. The de church will maybe flock back to church. They will begin to see, oh, that's a good church. When they come back to church, change your rules, man. Don't, don't just sit there and begin to condemn them. Begin to do the same things that made these people walk out of church. Let your church become so appealing to both the de church and the unchurched that the church begin to feel uncomfortable, but also train the church on how to welcome these two mindsets these two kinds of people, because they will come in all styles. Don't be too focused on their dress code. Don't be too focused on their English or their color or whatever they are looking. You know, just accept them. Have this welcoming space and let them feel at home. If they cannot feel at home in church, where do you want them to feel at home? Make your church a church that is churching the dechurched. Thank you. God bless you.